4.8 Newton's method. Suppose that a car dealer offers to sell you a car for $18,000 or for payments of $375 per month for five years. The monthly interest rate that the dealer charge is a solution for this equation. The details of this are explained in exercise 41. Take a look at the degree of this equation. It is of 60 degree, right? Now, do we have a formula to solve equation like this? How can we solve such equation? Now, some of you might say that uh, maybe we can use a computer or a calculator to do it, right? When your computer or calculator do the calculation, they are using this Newton's method. Now let's go over some facts that are already proven. When the equation is of degree 2, that's called a quadratic equation. And we have a formula called quadratic formula to solve it. For equations of degree 3 or 4, we do have formulas to solve them. So that's good news. However, those formulas are extremely complicated and sometimes it might be even easier to solve it directly instead of using the formula. Now what about for equations of degree 5 or higher? It is proven that there are no formula to solve equations of degree 5 or higher. So this equation here is of degree 60 so certainly, we don't have a formula to solve it. Also, for transcendental equations, such as this one over here, this one here, it makes a trig function with polynomial function. Those are called transcendental equations. We don't have a formula to solve it. So how do we deal with complicated equation like this? We're going to use a method called Newton's method to approximate the solutions. Let's take a look at this graph right here. We're going to use this to explain Newton's method. Suppose this is a graph for the function f. And we're trying to solve this equation f of x equal to 0. Then the solution or the root corresponds to this x-intercept right here. Now, to approximate this root, let's call this r right here. We can make our first guess over here. Our first guess here will be x1. Now, you might ask, how do I know which number to choose as x1? You choose x1 such that f of x1 is not too far from 0. For example, when I substitute x1 into x into the function, the function value might say turn out to be 1. And 1 is not too far from 0. So x1 is our first approximation. x1 is our first guess. Now what do we do with our first approximation, our first guess right here? We are going to find the corresponding point on the graph right here. Now in this case, we go up and hit the graph right here. And now at this point, we're going to draw the tangent line of the curve. Now I'm going to ask you, what will be the equation of this tangent line if I put that in point slope form? The derivative of the function is f prime of x. That corresponds to the slope of the tangent line at each x. So when x equal to x1, the slope of the tangent line is f prime of x1. What about x1, y1? Those are the coordinates for a point on this tangent line. Do we know a point on this tangent line? Which point do you see? x1, f of x1? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. This point right here. 
So y minus f of x1, and then here will be x minus x1. So this is the equation for this tangent line right here. So why do I want to draw this tangent line right here? Now take a look at the tangent line right here. What is the x-intercept of this tangent line? x2. Yeah, you see x2 right here? Now, is x2 a little bit closer to the root than x1? Comparing to x1, is it getting closer to the root? Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, right? Okay. So the idea behind this is actually the tangent line is close to the curve. This tangent line is close to the curve, okay? So the x-intercept here is going to be close to the x-intercept of the curve. So when I do that this way, this x-intercept is going to be closer to this x-intercept of the curve. So it gets closer. Now this x2 uh, being the x-intercept of this, of this tangent line right here, uh, we can find x-intercept, right? How do we find x-intercept if we know the equation for the line? To find x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to 0. And then we can solve for x2. You see that the idea here is to get a closer approximation to the root than x1. So we're trying to find out what this x2 is. x2 is the x-intercept of this tangent line. So we can set y equal to 0 in this equation for this tangent line and then solve for x2. So let's do it together. Setting y equal to 0, this x-intercept will be x2 comma 0. So basically I just set y equal to 0 and I'm trying to solve for x2. Now pause a moment and solve for x2 and tell me what you get. So x2 is equal to this. Okay, so we solve for x2. So if you have x1 and you can use this uh, to get x2 and x2 is a little bit closer to the root. We are trying to approximate the root. So this is a better approximation. It's called the second approximation. The x2 is the second approximation. So uh, notice that this work, providing that the duality is for x1 here is not equal to zero, right? You cannot divide by zero right here. We can repeat this process, right? So x1 is the first approximation. So what we do here is we go up and hit the graph and find this point and we draw the tangent line. And then we use this x-intercept for this tangent line as the second approximation to the root. And you can see that that is a little bit closer to the root, okay? Now, we can continue, okay? Now for x2 right here, we're gonna repeat the same process. So we're going to go up and hit the graph right here. And we have this point, and we're gonna draw the tangent line again. We're gonna draw the tangent line, and then we can find the x-intercept of that tangent line, and that is x3. As you can see that x3 is even closer to the root, okay? And we can continue over here. So x3 here, we go up and hit the graph, and we draw the tangent line at this point, and uh, what happened here is we find the x-intercept for the tangent line, that will be x4, and as you can see here, it's getting really close to the, the root of that equation, right? Okay, so that's the idea. So uh, that's called Newton's method. Now I'm going to ask you guys to find the third approximation, okay, x3. If you know x2, what will be x3 equal to? Any idea? Is it x2 minus f of x2 or f prime of x2? Yes, you got it, okay? Because okay. over here now, the x2, okay? So when we do it this way, the x2 is taking the place of this x1, right? So what happened here is you just replace this x1 by x2 because it's the same idea. What happened here is that will be equal to x2 minus f of x2 over f prime of x2. Uh, it's the same idea. Except this time, instead of x1, it is x2. So x1 here, replaced by x2. This will be the equation to express this x3 right here, right? Okay? And then we can continue, okay? 
So we know x4 is related to x3, and this replaces x2 here by x3. So you see the pattern, right? You see the pattern? What happened to x of n plus 1? Can you find a formula over here? What should I write over here? x of n minus f of uh, x of n over f prime of n. Okay, hey, very nice. Okay. So basically, so we place x2 over here by xn over here. The, this is called the n plus 1 approximation. So the n plus 1 approximation is equal to the n approximation minus the function value at this xn and divide by the, the derivative of the function at xn. Okay, so iterate. If you try to program this, you can actually write a program to, to get a better and better approximation to the root. So you can have a, a loop to do that. Right, so what happened over here is uh, you can see that x1, x2, x3, as we iterate, as we continue this process here, xn is getting closer and closer to the, to the root. This x and this up, go up, x and this up, and then go up, tangent right, x and this up, and we're getting closer and closer to the root uh, over here. So this is the idea, okay? This is the formula right here for the n plus 1 approximation using this method called Newton's method. So we just use this picture to illustrate that. Uh, notice that this idea is going to work, providing that the derivative at that xn is not zero. Well, but let's just think about the case that is not zero. First, okay? So we don't want to overcomplicate that. Okay, so take a look at this first example. I want someone to read this. Starting with this one, yeah. X equals to find the third approximation of x3. Yeah. x3 uh, to the root of the equation x cubed minus 2x minus 5 equals 0. Good job. Thank you. Okay, take a look at this equation. It is a degree 3, right? So it is degree 3 right here. Uh, we do have a formula, but it is very complicated. We're going to apply Newton's method to approximate the root for this. What do you mean root? Okay, remember root uh, before? We think about it as a solution. In Chinese root, we call it gen. So that's a solution. So we're trying to find the solution, the real solution of this. Well, we actually approximate that, um, approximate the solution. So using Newton's method. So first of all, we're going to have a function. Okay, so we're going to have the function. So we're going to let this to be the function. We're going to let f of x to be that. We can let f of x equal to this function. So we're trying to get the other side to be zero. Because uh, f of x equals zero, then that the root corresponding to the x in this cell. So over here, so I will try to get this side over here to be zero. So I'm going to let f of x equal to this. Now, in order to use Newton's method, we need to, so we need to find the derivative. What's the derivative of this function? 3x three, three squared minus 2. Yes, okay, very nice. So we have the function right here, and then we have the derivative right here, and then we're going to choose x1 to be 2. That's the first approximation. Now, why choose x1 to be 2? Okay, why do we choose this as the first approximation? Actually, uh, Newton himself used this equation, this, this exact same equation, to illustrate his method. You initiate this Newton's method, and he choose x1 to be 2. And why did he choose it? Um, he substitute 1 first. So f of 1 uh, turn out to be negative 6, f of 2 to be negative 1, and then he choose x to be 3. So f of 3 is 16. So this is negative 6, and this is 16. So somewhere in between, they're going to cause 0. Right? This is negative, this is positive. So somewhere in between is going to cause zero. And then f of 2 is negative 1. A negative 1 is not too far from zero. So he choose x here to uh, x1 to be 2. Okay? Because f of that is not too far from zero. So that's why he chose uh, x1 to be the first approximation. And nowadays you can get this first approximation by using a graphing calculator. And you can try to guess the first approximation. Okay, so x1 equal to 2. So we can 
try to get the second approximation based on this first approximation x1. But let's first uh, write down the formula for Newton's method for the n plus 1 approximation. I'm going to see you guys remember this, the formula for the n plus 1 approximation. Uh, what does x of n plus 1 equal to? What was the formula? x of n minus f of x of n over f prime of x of n. Okay, very nice. Uh, that was the formula for the n plus 1 approximation. It basically is the n approximation, the xn minus f of xn, that's the function value at xn, divided by the derivative of the function at xn. So you probably want to remember that maybe just for, for this section. Okay, now, what should I write over here then? So that will be xn okay, minus, now we substitute xn into this x over here, uh, into this function. So we have this, and then we substitute xn into the x over here in the dual t. We come up with this one right here. So this will be the, the n plus 1 approximation. So we're going to use this. So x2 is equal to, maybe we can repeat this formula a couple of times so then uh, we can remember this by heart. Okay. So over here, x2 is equal to, how is x2 related to x1? What should I put over here? It's going to equal to x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. So over here, we place xn over here by x1. Okay, we have this. And we know that x1 is equal to 2. That was the first approximation. So just substitute. Okay, so substitute over here. Uh, I want everyone use a calculator, calculate this, and tell me what does this equal to. So you just tell me that it is equal to uh, 21 over 10. So that is uh, 2.1. 2.1, okay, you got it. Now, I want everyone to find the third approximation, x3. Continue and tell me what you get at, at the end. But first of all, uh, let's see what should I write over here, okay? So how does x3 here relate to x2? So what should I write over here? x2. Okay, x2, okay, good. x2 minus, what should I put on top here? Uh, f of x2, f prime x2. Yes, okay. So here will be f of x2, f by x2, and f of x2 over here is this, and f prime of x2 here is this. And now we just go ahead and substitute x2 to be equal to 2.1. So go ahead and calculate this, and tell me approximately what does it equal to. Try, try this again. Now remember, when you use the calculator, it, you probably want to put a parenthesis over here, a okay, parenthesis over here and here. So just make sure that uh, the order of operation, okay, so you do this first and then this and then this and this. 2.09456. Okay, very nice, yes. 2.09456, right? Okay, very nice, yes, okay. Uh, I get the same number, okay, that's great. So this, okay. Now this is this is the third approximation. Okay, it is going to be closer to the root. Now I'm going to continue this process. So I'm going to find x4, and I will use the formula again. And it turned out that x4 and x3 uh, they agree on four decimal places. So if I uh, try to find x4, uh, it's going to be two point two point oh nine four six and continue the, the digit. So they're going to agree to four decimal places. If I only want the approximation to be uh, accurate to four decimal places, then I can stop. So what happened over here is if you have the two approximation, then if they agree to four decimal places, then you can use this, use this one here. That will be accurate to four decimal places. Now I'm going to ask you guys try to plug in x equal to this into this expression and see what you get. So go ahead and put this in into x and see what do you get. Yeah, it was like 0 0.0054119 something. Yes, very good. 
So it is going to be point zero 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 uh four nine something right? So it's about point zero 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 five, okay? And that is really close to zero, okay? So you see that the the third and the fourth approximation is actually very close to the root because when you substitute, this is very close to zero. I want someone to read this, okay? So from this over here to this, who should I ask? Several places. Newton's method. How do we know when to stop? The rule of thumb, the rule of thumb that is generally used is that we can stop when successive approximations x of n and x of n plus 1 agree to 8 decimal places. A precise statement concerning accuracy in Newton's method will be given in exercise 11.11.39. Very nice. Okay, good. So, uh, any, any, someone else with this? Notice that the procedure in going from n to n plus 1 is the same for all values of n. It is called an iterative process. This means that Newton's method is particularly convenient for use with a programmable calculator or computer. Good job. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's take a break.